So with that, I'd like to introduce Paul Zeppenvelt from Shell, who will be giving our keynote presentation. Paul? Good, this works. Good, good morning, everybody. Um, good to see uh, so many of you in a real event where indeed uh, many of us see each other for the first time in 3D or, or 4D. My name is Paul Zepperfeld. I uh, manage the subsurface and the data and digital part for Shell Upstream. Thank you. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, always good to be in, in London. I lived here for, uh, for three years myself. If you meet me, perhaps if you live in London, you don't like London because of all the transport. But I, I love it. Iconic city. Um, very historic events uh, happening uh, a few hundred meters uh, from here very soon. I promised my, uh, my family back in Holland I would bring home some uh, coronation kitsch, so I'm looking forward to some pillows or uh, teacups that will look uh, very old uh, in half a year's time. But um, London is not only the place where in, in Westminster Bridge you need to you know, find your way through the, the, the French tourists, as we had to do on our way here, but also where everybody comes together um, for a purpose, and, and we are coming together here for a very clear purpose, and that is um, OSDU. Uh, as an, as an, as an, uh, really an, a multi-year effort. And it's good before we, we start today, and I think uh, Steve already referred to it, how special it is actually the achievement so far. You could really compare you know, the way that the industry has come together for OSDU. You can, I'm, in my mind, compare it to things like the OGCI, the Climate Initiative, or even how the, how the industry came together after Deepwater Horizon. Um, so it is really uh, amazing that we're doing this, that we're there, you know, we're jointly trying to really improve um, our business. And what's also very clear, and I'll come to that later, uh, always do implementation is very much a team sport. So whereas I'm going to try and sketch some of the dilemmas and the, and, the, and, the, and the kind of the progress that we've, we've made, we're very clear that um, no single company has all the answers. So we're very much also here. Uh, to learn uh, from all of you and, uh, and jointly we can make more, pro more progress. So really going back to the, um, the basics on what we want out of uh, OSDU. And I, I should say that for us, OSDU is our plan A, it's our plan B and our plan C. We're really all in. And why, why is that? So of course, OSDU will help us to find the data uh, faster and cheaper. Uh, lots of information and particularly the intelligence out of the information is lost due to uh, handovers or people moving and it's really a valuable uh, asset. Of course what's important for the data is the metadata to explain the lineage, where it comes from, who used this data before, who reviewed it and, and you know, it's great that many companies are stepping up, for example colleagues in, in Exxon, and Exxon are doing great stuff in the OSDU forum on, on the topic of technical assurance of data. And data, finally, it's also, you know, we often call it an asset, but you can also call data a product. It is a product that you need to use for the right purpose. Um, and um, in the end of the day, if you use the data for the right purpose, you make better decisions. And that, in the end, is what it's all about. If I have to summarize what we're trying to do with OSDU in my company, I would always say the ability to make better and faster decisions. Now, if we move to... OSDU. Um, of course, OSDU is part of a whole ecosystem. Um, and you could argue that's the kind of the superpowers that we want to equip our um, subsurface colleagues with. And if, I, if you look to, from the left to the right on this plot, you can you move kind of a little bit from left to right to kind of from a, an area where you want to give people freedom to an area where auditability is important. Let me just quickly run through it. What we do want to give our uh, staff is our ability to uh, look at data that was previously siloed, put it next to each other, compare it, and really find new insights. So kind of your heuristic data exploration. That's a world of, you know, where you want to give freedom, you want to give, uh, you know, where AI and ML play a big role. Um, and that, of course, in the end, after it will feed into project work because, you know, nobody's doing this for a hobby. You're also working as part of a project, a well proposal or field development. And that is where you get into the middle pillar of this picture. 
Um, and this is where we are very keen also where the OSDU project workspace or project work environment will play a big role. The area where the vast majority of the work happens and where teams can cooperate. And maybe in that middle pillar you would see you know, all your individual work in progress attempts at you know, your seismic interpretation number 365, your simulation run number 2017. Um, that is where the project workspace, um, in my view, will, will, will play. And then finally, you move to the right, because at the end of the day, we are, we're about making decisions. We're about, you know, we're about making you know, mega box decisions on the basis of the right uh, data. And this is where auditability becomes more important. So maybe what we call, you know, we're moving a little bit more from the technical process side to the business process side. And this is where it becomes important to record out of all those hundreds of simulation runs, you know, this is, these are the assumptions that underpin my low, mid, and high case. So that when you start drilling, you will always see how, you know, what, what assumption did you not quite get quite, uh, quite right. But that is where plan versus actual lives. And we see uh, also in this whole ecosystem an important role for what we call workflow uh, orchestration. And whilst we will, we're working in this ecosystem, we're very keen that OSDU will keep us safe also, that OSDU will make sure that we use the data only for those uh, uh, roles that we're allowed to, uh, entitlements and obligations. Uh, a lot of data is, is available to us under a contract and we need to make sure that we don't over, overstep it. And that can all be done automatically. And also archiving, you know, it was certainly when we started working on non-records disposal, this was a big thing because a lot of people said, oh my God, I have to go through all my data. Something like non-records disposal will become, with uh, OSDU, should become a triviality. Once you're out of that middle layer where your project has come to an end and you're, you put in your investment proposal, perhaps you don't need to keep all your 800 runs that you didn't use and you get rid of it and it can all be automated with OSDU. Right, so how to get there? So it's, uh, the first step is of course loading, loading data and, and this is really only the first step and this is what we're at the moment working with and I'm not going to go into specifics because many co companies uh, here are, are going on the, on the same path. Um, we're in a, in a mode at the moment where we're trying to load data to offer visualization, first of all. And let's be clear, this is just the data, on-prem data is still right now the master, so this is the moving the data for the first time to the cloud. And this is not easy, I can tell you, and some, some people in this room have the, have the scars for it already, because of course it depends really on what your starting point is, how clean and how well organized is your data in the first place. So we're taking tons of legacy data uh, to, uh, to the cloud moment and there's all kinds of questions pop up and I try to put some of them on this uh, on this slide for example you get all kinds of dilemmas so if I move the data to to the cloud do I now do I clean it do I do a QC check uh, before I migrate it or can I is it actually smarter to migrate it maybe a little bit in its current state and automate the upgrading of the data um, then of course uh, you, you know, as I said, entitlements obligations is, uh, you know, always you really put your face in it, so you really say, you can, you know, you can wonder, do I want to fix that again before I migrate? And then it's the actual transport of the data, and what we call them pipelines, they're really uh, hundreds of pieces of software that will take the data from on-prem to, uh, to cloud, and of course, speed is an important uh, factor. At the moment, we're doing this mainly with uh, lots of log files, but you can imagine there will be challenges when you talk about, for example, pre-stack um, seismic data. Um, and then it's out there in the cloud, and then you have a question, do I need to do a back synchronization or not? Would rather not, uh, because that's a, a very uh, complex business. But of course, not every company or not every part of your company or organization moves to the cloud at the exact same time, and you still want your organization to be able to work together. So there's all kinds of uh, dilemmas, and we're very keen to share our experience and to learn from you on, the, on this uh, topic. Moving data is, of course, the first step. And it's really nice uh, to, to just, if you think about uh, to, to photography, using that as an analogy. Because when you know, everybody took their pictures, they're maybe, you know, by now, Brown or so, these, these photographs, they, they have no 
metadata with them. Nothing on camera settings or what have you. And of course, photography has uh, revolutionized with not only migrating uh, photos to the cloud, but also you know, what you can do with uh, the data is completely, uh, completely changed. And that is what we're very keen on, that it's not, this is not just a move to the cloud, but it's really about changing the workflows, really get people to work in a much more uh, integrated way. So um, that is, this is really what it's, what it's all about. In the near term, what we're doing uh, in, uh, in Shell is um, uh, really focusing initially on uh, log data. We find that, that certain communities are extra eager for innovation. Uh, in my experience, often the, the pedophysic, uh under us, very numeric uh, group of people, they're very keen to get that data and, for example, see what they can do with AI uh, ML. So that is something that we're um, doing. But of course, we had to start with the concept of a well. In our industry, a well is, is an entity that moves through the organization from expiration to hydrocarbon accounting. And it's often what I would call a, a coat hanger for a lot of data because a lot of the data that we're loading is actually associated uh, with a well. So that is uh, the first thing that we've, uh, we've done so that truly a, a well is truly born, born in, the, in the cloud. And that is quite a big job because you can imagine the concept of a well features in just about any, any application. So you're doing almost one of the most complex things right up front, but we felt that that was, uh, that that was really, uh, really necessary. Um, then what we want to offer uh, is, is really visualization uh, for, uh, for our staff, so really visualization on, of data that was previously really siloed. And it sounds, uh, it sounds very basic, but there's already a lot of excitement to, to, uh, from people to be able to, uh, to see that. Um, seismic is a big uh, thing. Seismic, I would say, is both holds a, maybe a majority of the promise of the cloud in terms of the ability through the cloud to uh, speed up uh, uh, workflows and use compute for example, seismic processing. It can still take typically nine months and you really want to flexibly apply that, uh, that compute uh, to that. But it's also, given the data volumes and the complexity, uh, one of the um, most challenging things. Um, not only data, of course, also applications moving to OSDU. We, uh, in our company, we've got hundreds uh, of them, and that is a whole, um, in, a whole ball game in itself. Um, whereas the moving the data is something that you learn, you can, you kind of, you know, it becomes a little bit more uh, repetitive and you can really speed that up. The applications that we have are uh, of many shapes and sizes, big and small, many different companies. So moving all that uh, capability to the cloud is uh, one of the things that we look at, look at with, uh, with awe, really, in terms of a challenge. But you've got to start somewhere and we hope to move the first what we call workhorse application to OSDU this year. I marked a few things in, in, in red, and one is uh, the project workspace or project work environment where really we're looking uh, for the OSDU forum to take the lead on the, the, the non-commercial uh, part, uh, the non-competitive part of that, because that refers back to that, that middle layer that I, that I showed, where we're very keen that we make good progress on that because we're moving everything to the cloud, and, and you know, you could argue, whereas there's current complexity with, with on-prem and silo databases and maybe regional instances, the potential is, of course, you make it even more complex unless you have some order in what you're doing in the cloud. So some way of teams being able to really work together uh, in the most uh, basic, uh, basic way. So that is, to us, it's very, uh, very urgent. And then another um, uh, challenge that we see coming, and, and again, we hope to learn a lot uh, about that from what you're, or what you're thinking about it, is the reversal of mastership. So as we're now loading data, uh, the on-prem is still the master, but you have to flip that around. 
and uh, that that comes, uh, you can imagine, with its own with its own challenges. How to do that, and whilst at the same time provide you know, the business continuity, because I don't know how it's in your organisation, but activity levels in our industry are very very high. So you're doing all this to a community that is at the moment trying to keep all the balls uh, in the air. So it's not easy. Right. Um, and this, here we come to the, the, the team sport bit. So uh, what we try to uh, kind of bucket activities and um, everybody has a role in this, in this move to a, new, a different way of working. You know, really, we're here for the OSD forum. That's to me indeed appropriate. We give that bucket, bucket A. And as far as we're concerned, you know, concern, you know, anything that we can agree on is not competitive. We're very keen for the OSD forum to, to lead that. So that is the, uh, the non-competitive part of the, the project work environment, the non-competitive part of things like multi-region. Um, and I think the progress has been great. We see you know, great progress on the data type definition. You know, we've got the CRS sorted out. So really what we can with a very solid reference implementation is really what we're looking to the OSDU uh, forum for. Then of course, the cloud service providers play a very uh, key, uh, key role. Um, uh, you know, multi-region and HPC will be, will be some of the areas where they say that this is where we can, you know, where, where we feel that there's competitive, competitive space. So they have a very clear role as well. And then of course, the software vendors, and let's be clear, OSDU is disruptive. We wanted to disruptive, be disruptive for a good reason. But of course, for the software vendors, OSDU is also quite disruptive in terms of changing their commercial world. Uh, what we are looking at from an, an, an IOC point of view is we're very keen that there is open competition through the standardization that OSDU offers. Really now, a, a, a mini startup company could uh, compete with some cool software with, with the you know, established, established names. But established names, of course, they need to morph their business as well. So it is an exciting space. Um, but the software vendors are, of course, key. Um, and then, of course, it comes on to the right. I, I can say that really we're keen as, as, as an IOC to have as little as possible in bucket, in bucket D. Uh, we are, in essence, we are an energy company. We're not, we're not a software company. And it's, there's no doubt that we will be moving to a kind of a PaaS or SaaS environment over, over time. There will be some bits that will be in-house, the, the bits that we think are... Um, competitive and every company uh, will have that uh, uh, will have uh, some of that but really uh, we're keen to um, uh, you know, we don't want uh, things to be bespoke for our own company because that is actually defeats the whole philosophy of uh, of the OSDU forum and my final uh, slide just wrapping up uh, wrapping up with this so um, to be clear we nobody has done anything like this before we uh, certainly have it, we're certainly uh, learning, uh, learning as we go. Um, we're very. Uh, it, it's good to stay um, uh, uh, humble. We are definitely made some errors in our implementation. Everybody, everybody has. We shouldn't be uh, uh, ashamed to say that and be able to. We should be able to move to change course where we need to. Um, we're doing all this while the world is changing all around us. Um, you know, technology is, is also at the same time moving at the same pace. So you always have this dilemma, do I now go with this or there's something else cool coming a little bit later? But then you get the kind of the, the jam tomorrow uh, uh, dilemma where, of course, the world into this nirvana is an exciting one, but it is a very heavy spend area. And it's important to show some intermediate progress to our uh, customers uh, also along the way. Otherwise, people start to lose the belief. So you have to take it step by step and not gonna wanna go all the way right, uh, right from the beginning. Um, there are some clear uh, further enhancements of, of OSDU, we all, uh, we all know them. And lastly, a, a plea, and it's also very much in the, in the philosophy of that everybody can play at this. Um, you know, we're very keen on the, the innovation marketplace. We, uh, we posted some stuff in there. We got some great uh, responses um, and, and we're, we're following that up. So that's maybe a, a final plea to really leverage the OSDU marketplace uh, because I think it will speed up innovation and 
Faster innovation means we give these superpowers to our people faster, our workflows will improve, and we'll make better and faster decisions. And that is good for an industry that we're all in that is still essential to me, a force for good and important for this planet. Thank you. Thank you.